Hello, and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals and Heels. Right now, I have the badass, the one, the only, Melissa Ramiza here with me at SolarCon. Melissa, not only is she really good at what she does, really great leader, but she's also won tons of awards, and she actually has the skills to go behind her words, which is incredible. So can you explain to us a little bit of like how you got here? Because I know we talked a little bit yesterday about like you having this like internal drive of like I want to be the best I want to get a reward and like how you were like shocked of like the ability and like where you would have to climb to in order to actually get there can you just tell us a little bit about that yeah so I started in solar in 2018 um, with a pretty big company and I kind of slacked off my first like two years I'd say okay and I got to go to my first event kind of like this it's called door-to-door con so it was door-to-door con not this past year Not the year before, but the year before that. So almost three years ago. And they give out these awards, the Golden Door Awards, the Industry Awards. And uh, I'd never been to one of these events. So I'm meeting all these new people. And I'm watching all these people go up and get their Golden Door Awards. And I'm like, So before that, tell everyone how do you even get one of those or what that is. Yeah, so they change the rules every year. Um, Golden Door for solar now is 100 points. So today has how how that works. Back in the day, it was like 100 sales in a year. You could get it. Then it was like 130 installs in a year and you can get it. And they make it harder every year. Okay. So then um, what happened this this last year is they switched it to 100 points. So a self-gen deal installed is one point. Okay. A setter's deal that you close is half a point once it's installed. Okay. Which means if you're closing setter's deals, you got to get 200 installs, which I do mix and match both. So <laughs> the year I first won it, it was 130 installs in a year. I think I'd hit like 100 and... 56 installs that year. Last year I had like 170 or something installs Yeah. Uh, between my previous company and the company I'm with now and then like little sub dealers that I used. That's a uh, lot of installs. Yeah, yeah. And just think about it like there's fall off rates, there's things like that. If you sign a deal in December, it's not getting installed by January. So you really got to push at the beginning of the year pretty hard up until about October to make sure that your installs hit by the end of the year. Yeah. So it's like putting the foot on the gas pedal in January versus trying to put it on the gas pedal in December. Um, so that was fun, but yeah, my first year I was I was at these events. I'm watching the pest guys, the roofing guys, the windows yeah. guys, the alarms, the solar get these awards, and I'm just like, shoot, I want to be on a stage. Like that's really cool. These people are getting all this notoriety. They have something to take home. They have something to remember it by. So then I started walking up to every girl at the event, and there wasn't a lot. Way more girls here than there was at Door Door Premier One. I think I found about maybe 30 girls okay. at the entire event of like a thousand some odd people. Wow. So very very small odds. So I asked every girl, what's your best month? What's your most insults? What's your what's your most sales? How many people are, you know, I'm asking every metric. I'm like, I got UB, I got UB, I got UB. And then I started just verbalizing people like, I have it in the back. I'm going to be the number one female solar sales rep in the mm. United States. And Lindsay, the girl who was up on stage that we were seeing earlier, yeah, she told me at dinner, she's like, you might not want to say that <laughs> until you talk to Sully. I was like, no, no, there's no, your best month is 28. Like, I've already hit that. And like, I'm going to get better. Like, I'm so not going to get who? worse. Who is it? Sully Zink. So okay. anybody in solar that is a female, I, I hope to God you know who Sully is because she's a badass. She's been in door to door for about 13 years. Okay. She's done pests, which is probably the hardest door to door thing to do because their grind is like eight in the morning to nine at night. They have a morning meeting, they have a night meeting, they go oh, to bed, crap. they rinse, repeat six days a week. It's crazy. And they work straight for like five, six months like that. So they put Sully on stage and she's getting her Golden Door Award. And Sam Taggart hands her the mic. He's like, Sully, what's your best month? And at this point, I've already told people. I'm going to be the top rep. Like it's, <laughs> it's already been said. And she says 62 deals and I damn near shit my pants. I was like, how the fuck am I going to get 62 deals? Like, like knowing my conversions, I'm like, I'm reverse engineering in my head and I'm like, oh my God, that would have to be 240 something appointments. I would have to run a hundred and something yeah. of those. How the heck? And, and, and that's not with a day off. There's 31 days in a month. I have to close two a day. And I'm like, dude, all this reverse engineering. Yeah. Like, I don't have to take, I can't take days off. No doctor's appointments. Fuck the dogs. Like all these things. Fuck I'm already, the dogs. Like I'm like literally already <laughs> pushing stuff away. And I'm like, how am I going to do this? Like I've got to do it. Like I've already said I'm gonna yeah. do it. So, how did that compare to where you were at? You said twenty. How many? How I had done like, like I was like at my best month. I had done like right around twenty, like five deals. Okay, so triple, triple. <laughs> yes, like okay. insane. And that's like me putting my foot on the gas yes. pedal. So I went to an event like right after Door Door Con. I went to the Knockstar event. Yes. And I remember. I'll never forget pulling my credit card out of my pocket. And I handed it to Taylor McCarthy and Danny Pessy. I was like, hey, I've already told everybody I'm gonna be the top female solar sales rep in the nation. Like, I need your guys' help to get there. Like, I'll be a complete student. I'll show up to every call. Like, I've heard great things about your program. Yeah. And they're like, hey, you've gotta commit now and figure it out later. Like, that's what we're doing right now. Is you're committing right now, right? Yeah. I'm committing right now. And we're gonna figure it out as we go. I'm like, correct. Like, whatever I have to do, I'll do it. And they're like, all right. So I was on every call. It's first one. How much did you pay for that trading? $20,000. Swipe my card, 20 grand. All right, like 
The, pro the crazy thing is the program's cut in half now. Yeah. It's half the cost. So yeah. I paid when it was at its peak, but like, I, and I always tell my reps this, they want me to pay for coaching, or they want to pay for, you will not pay attention to it until you, until you start paying for it. Yeah. You know, like you have no skin in the game. You don't care. Yeah. I've had people pay for my training. I didn't pay nearly as much attention to when the money came out of my own pocket. Yeah. I was there with a notebook every day, writing everything down, watching yeah. every video, staying up till one in the morning. I'd come back from the field while I'm cooking dinner, tell McCarthy's on my TV, I'm watching him. That's the guy that Jerry put on the TV yesterday. That's, okay. my, that's my mentor. Oh, amazing. You know, yeah. and... I was just, I was such a, I was just trying to absorb everything I could and I was willing to like put every ounce I had into it. Okay, like, let's break that down because uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, right? Where people are unwilling to burn the boats. Yeah. To really get what they want. Like yeah. they're not willing to get uncomfortable, right? People, humans, they hate change. They don't want to get uncomfortable because we're wired to survive. We're not wired for comfortability, right? So if you allow yourself to be like, hey, I'm right here. I need to triple my skill level, yep. right? The only thing that's the difference between you, this version of you and this version of you is a skill set. And like, how can I do that as quick as possible and as efficient as possible and going all in on yourself made you focus, yeah. right? Compared to other people like, hey, here's a free training here, here's a free training here. They don't take it as seriously because like you said, they don't have skill, skin yeah. in the game at all. Yeah. You know, so like for somebody that is, you know, dabbling on the YouTube, right? It could be anything that they want to learn. Dabbling on the YouTube or or like they're, they're kind of going to an event and kind of like paying attention halfway in it. Um, what would you say to those people, you know, to really help them get to that next level? I think the first thing is verbalizing it. So like you really have to like verbalize, like that's what I did. I went yeah. out and verbalized it to everybody. And then once I started saying that, I started internalizing it. Yeah. So like it's verbalize and internalize. And like you can verbalize, but without internalizing it, like it doesn't matter. Anybody can go say, I'm gonna be a billionaire. I'm gonna be a billionaire, you know what I mean? But like until you like internalize that and like you think about it, what does that look like? What yeah. does that feel like? What does that, about like? It. what does that taste like? How will you know when you've gotten there? Like those things, and for me, I knew, like for me it was numbers, right? Like these are the numbers I have to hit and like it, I'm gonna be honest I never beat Sui 62 in a month but you know what? I beat her on the year because I was consistent wow. and I'm one of the most consistent people in the industry so I always have people hitting me up like oh I can wreck you in a month sure you can I'm sure in a 30-day competition you could but let's go on a thousand day competition because yeah. I'm gonna outlast you mm. and that's what this industry is about it's like outlast out survive out play out scale everything you know yeah. and that's why so many people fall off and there's so much drop off in this industry because people like aren't willing to like commit now figure it out later and that's just been something where I stay consistent. Like all these people come up to me and they're like, like you, they're like, we gotta fly out, do these things. And I'm like, all right, how do I fit this in to keeping my numbers the way they have to stay for yeah. me to stay in this position I have? But you think like that, and I think that's the difference is that yeah. some people, they're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, let's just, you know, and they don't like think like conceptually about like, how do I make sure that this fits into who I'm wanting to be? Yeah. Because it's not about the goal. Right, it's about who you become, so, yep. you know, and like this version of you right now is very different than the version of you that paid twenty grand. Yeah, you know, so and, and how how is it? Not just like financially, obviously, but like talk about like your your leadership, your responsibility, and how you feel about yourself now. Yeah, I mean, I, I had no influence three years ago. Like, yeah, no. If I walked through this event three years ago, no one knew my name. You knew, like you know what I mean? People were telling you to come find me. Yeah. And that's that's the thing is like you start to build an influence, but the scary part is is, is influence is a double edged sword, and I'm sure you understand yes. that. Because like you have people always looking at you, right? Like yeah. always. Like even when you don't want to be looked at, people are looking at you. Yeah. They're looking at your Instagram. They're looking at your Facebook. They're calling you. They're texting. Whatever that looks like. So like you got to set the best example, and that's how you become the best leader. And like I've set an example. I've I've made a name for myself that now like recruiting's easy. Like it's funny when people are like, oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? Like it's like build influence. Become the leader you want to be. Like Andy's guy said, become the leader you want to follow. Yeah. Be that leader because like you can go pay for all these ad marketing agencies, and they're gonna find someone like me or a Will or who, we build influence. They're gonna follow somebody that can influence them to be a better person. Yes. And it's been incredible. Like cause now I have a team of about 20. I have one girl specifically on my team that has just done everything the same way I've done it, and she's getting everything she's ever wanted. And she didn't come from much. She came from less than I did and I didn't come from much at all either but like first year in solar bought like a, a half million dollar house got a hundred thousand dollar car you know like paying for paying for training showing yeah. up to these events she's on stage at two o'clock you know Incredible. she's been in solar for not even two years yeah. and it's funny and I found the girl on tinder originally tinder didn't work out <laughs> and then she followed me on instagram she started seeing the influence I did yeah and that's why she came in dude that's she was insane. Like, yeah you know what I mean and like that's the thing is it's it's building influence but building influence is a double-edged sword so be careful well, hold on let's go into it. that because success yeah. leaves clues yeah yeah. And we don't have to freaking invent the wheel. Yeah. Right? Like you model after somebody who's done it and you rinse and repeat. 
right? And the fact that she was coachable, she's like, hey, I'll do whatever it takes. Like, yep. just show me and then I'll do it. Most people don't do it. Yep. They're like, ooh, that looks really great. Or, oh, that's yeah. a great idea. But they don't follow through and make it happen. And that part is the hardest part because now you have responsibility, yep. right? Now people are looking at you. Now, like, you have to be your word and say what you're, what you were going to do. Like, just yep. like how you walked around, like, hey, I'm going to be the number one. Like, I have to do the work, yeah. you know? And I think that what's really great, it's like you didn't say, I'm gonna be the number one in a month. I'm not, I'm gonna be the number one tomorrow. You didn't say that, you're like, hey, like I'm gonna give myself an ample amount of time where I can put in the skills, where I can model the process, where I can make it happen so I can get what I want. And by you getting what you want, not only did it transform your life, and now it's transforming a lot of other people's lives, right? Does that make it worth it to you? Because that's what I chase, like that I, high. I, it's incredible. Like money's great. The paychecks yeah. are awesome. But when you see your guys cashing those paychecks, yes. and like they're putting their families in a better position, they're putting themselves in a better position, that's better than any paycheck I've ever received. Better than any paycheck. And like, I'll never forget like Kayla getting her first house. And I was like, mm. you did it in a third of the time I did. Amazing. In a third of the time. Everything she's doing, she's only been in solar for two years. I've been doing this for seven years. Yeah. She's catching up real quick. Yeah. Like she's getting her second house now. It's filled with people. They're paying yeah. her mortgage. She's got two cars, just like me. You know, she's renting one of them out or she yeah. has one for reps. Like it's been crazy to see. Now she's building teams. She's recruiting people. She's building influence. She's getting on stages. I and that's it. from putting herself out there but she should just come in and get handed it you know and, and that's the funny thing is like people think all these guys are like overnight success and it's like y'all didn't see what we went through those first couple of years to, to get where we are today the the long nights the, the shitty doors the, the angry homeowners the not knowing what we're doing the amount of times we almost quit I could count on my hands and toes how many times I almost quit the shop yeah. it's crazy and like times where I'm just like this isn't worth it like my mental health yeah. is worth more than the money that I'm making. Yeah. But that it's it's not about the money at the end of the day, it's like your people. You know, like it's like I'm there for my guys and that's been like the coolest thing to watch. And then yeah. like you watch people evolve, you watch them get better, you watch their numbers change. You slowly see their life evolve into like what they want. Mm. And that's the coolest part of it. Like I uh, I had a girl, Bree, she uh, reached out to me about a year ago. Mm -hmm. And she like really wanted to work with me when I was working with a company that was only in Colorado. So I was like, hey, I know you're in Missouri. Yeah. You, got, you got to move here and then you can work with me. And then so I found a company where I could yeah. work with anybody anywhere pretty much. And that was a game changer. Yeah. And as soon as I made that transition, she's like, I want to come work with you. I, she's been with me since about August. And her best month, I think she said she had closed like five or six deals installed. She's making, she had never ever made over like $10,000 paid. Cash. Everyone says I made over, <laughs> paid into her bank account. Yeah. She's hitting that now. She just bought a brand new car. Like, like seeing that stuff, like those, the, and like the funny part was, is Kayla, the one I was talking yeah. about, she's the one who brought Brie to the dealership. Amazing. That was me last year. I was the one bringing my girls to the dealerships. Yeah. Go get your Teslas, go get your Kias, go get yeah. what you want. And now it's so cool to watch them see what I've done, duplicate yeah. it with the reps. And now it's like, you can almost step back and you're like, damn, you guys grow up so quick. Like, yeah. you know, but yeah, it's so all your awesome. Babies. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're your children. And if anybody fucks with them, like, it's game oh, over. Oh, yeah. Game yeah. over. Yeah, for you sure. Know? Let's go into the mentality really fast. Um, there's days where it's, it's rough. Yeah. You know, really rough. You know, uh, feeling like you want to quit, you know, regardless of... I remember, uh, man, what was that, five, six years ago? So I would be walking on job sites, right? Walking onto job sites, trying to convince these builders to try to give me their blueprints. And, like, some of them were not not nice yeah you know and I remember like waiting out there like a freaking stalker like seven o'clock in the morning trying to get them like on the property I'm like I'm gonna get this house so I walk up and they're like you again like why are you here like you know go to my office go through something like but Bob like yeah. I thought we were gonna be friends yeah. I brought you breakfast tacos can we just yeah. talk really fast you know yeah. try to like do anything and just feeling so defeated at the end of the day by like chasing all those properties waiting there like a freaking stalker trying to make it happen my freaking I smell it's Houston it's hot and I'm like my boots, I had these like Ugg rain boots, not Ugg, so what was it? What are those like water oh, boots? You know what I'm talking um, about? That like sorority girls yes, wear? Yes, Doc, Doc, Doc Toss. No, no, something else. Oh, I can't think of it off the top of my head. Anyways, I bought those because I thought it was really cool because I could never afford them when yeah. I was, anyways, I bought them like $150 boots, Hunter boots. Hunter yes, boots, yes. yeah, I had okay. those were muddy and nasty. And I remember like sitting in my car and like I didn't close anything that week and I've been talking to so many freaking people and I'm like, I hate my life right now, but I didn't want to go back and be a waitress again. So I was like, I have to keep going. 
what do you tell somebody in those moments? Because you have people on your team that have rough days like that. Like, what do you what do you say to them to like help them keep going? There's like so many things people say in solar. Like you've probably heard a million times here in the solar coaster. And like there's high a highs. Solar coaster. Solar coaster. High highs, low lows. Yeah. Close three deals in a day. Woo! I'm on top of the world. I made thirty thousand dollars. Next day, all three cancel. Oh my god! Oh, I hate my rough. life. Shit's terrible. Why the fuck did I do like this? Like they, they they sign yeah, and then they cancel yeah, yeah, the deal. Yeah, it happens. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, like stuff like that's happening. Yeah. So like the biggest thing, like you can always tell your guys, one, don't count your chickens before they hatch. Like once glass that's hits what the you roof, mean by that. Yeah, yeah. Cash yeah. needs to be in your bank account, yeah, right? Yeah, it's got to hit your bank. I don't care about what you earned that yeah, month. Yeah, no. I care about what you were paid yeah. that month. Oh uh, yeah, I hear you. And and it's getting your guys prepared for that. That this is tough. And if everybody could do what we're doing, everybody would. Everyone do it. would do it. If you were paid on the yeses, everyone would do it. But we're actually paid for no. So how I train my guys is I will when they're with me, once they start getting their first couple deals, is I will reverse engineer their numbers. And I will take how much money they've made yeah. and how many no's they received that month. And I will divide their commissions by the no's. And I say, everybody tells you, every time somebody tells you no, I just did this for uh, Kayla's recruit the other day. Yeah. Every time somebody tells you no, it's worth $424. Hey. Aren't you that much more excited to go get a no? Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? And every time you touch a door, even if no one answers, it's worth 100 bucks. So even if they didn't answer, you thank that door. Thank you so much. That's a hundred dollars closer to where I need to be. Oh, that's good. You know that's what I mean? So like, like getting them to like shift that mindset. It's not like I lost this much money. It's like, what are the nose worth, which are the hardest things to get through in a day? Yeah. What are those empty doors where I didn't get my opportunity? What are those worth? Yeah. And fuck the yeses. Those yeah. aren't worth shit. The nose and the doors knock. That's that's what the yeah. money's worth because we deal with so much rejection in this job. Yeah. So like reverse engineering that for them to see and they can go home and still in their mind they're like, cool. If I keep doing things the way yeah. I'm doing them, this is what my day was worth even though I didn't get any sales. Yeah. Because it's all going to equal out at some point. Yeah, and I think also as they as they gain more skill level, right? Like yes. Those no's become less and less, so they're going to be and worth more and more, that, right? Yeah, it's like that's if you don't ever get better. Yeah. Like let's just say you don't get better. Yeah. Let's, your life is like a stock; it either goes up or down. You, there really is no neutral. But yeah. like, let's just say you never got better. Like you just stayed where you were at. Yeah. How incredible is that? Now imagine what that looks like when you build your skill set. Yeah, and you're doubling what you yeah. did before. Oh, that's yeah. incredible. Okay, one last piece of advice. What would you give a piece of advice to your younger self? Before all this started, yeah. what, what would you tell her? I, I get asked this question a lot, and I'm, I'm always going to come back to the same answers. Like, ask for help sooner because I've been in solar now for almost eight years yeah. to make a splash finally. Yeah. And, like, if I had asked for help sooner, if I had invested in myself sooner, I would have been there way faster. Honestly, I'd probably be retired out of the solar industry by now. Um, yeah. For all I know, because my first four years was really trying to figure it out. Yeah. You know? And then, like, year four, I figured it out. I hit the algorithm. I found the people. I built the influence. I was building the teams. And I wish I asked for help sooner. And the scariest part about being in sales, and you might be able to relate to this, but, like, every time we get into a room, how many dudes are there in here right now? Yes. A lot. A lot of dudes. And it's kind of scary when they're crushing it, and you're like, I don't want to sound like the dumb girl. I don't want them Ooh. to kick me off the team. Um, I don't want to be a burden. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to keep on keeping on doing what I'm doing. That's my girl Kayla right there. Absolutely crushes it. Absolutely. Hey, amazing. we're talking about you in my podcast right now. Yeah, we're talking about you. But <laughs> want to come show your face real fast? Yeah. Come say what's up, Kayla. This is Kayla. This is Kayla Mooney, hey. guys. Absolutely. <laughs> what's your Instagram? Uh, it, she doesn't I know. know. I, just, I just changed it. We got to like work Kayla on it. Under dash Mooney, two Kayla eyes. underscore yeah. Mooney, two Ys. There we go. Yeah. Absolute savage, but like that that's one thing like I wish I did sooner. Like yeah. I wish so badly, like I I either asked my leaders or I found the right team for me. Yeah. Because I feel like it took me so long to find the right culture and the right team. Because I was like, this is what solar is or this yeah. is what it is. And had I known or it came to an event like this, I would have figured that out way sooner. Yeah, I think that, you know, you hit on a last, like, really important thing of, like, hey, I don't want to sound stupid. Yeah. Um, and I felt like that all the time as a woman, especially walking onto a property um, where these builders were that were trying to test my knowledge and purposely call things the wrong thing in order to see if I was the least competent, yeah. that I knew what I was doing. And the one piece of advice that I give for, you know, my girls um, when they're experiencing that is, like, if you don't know it, just don't try to say something right like i think that i used to do that i'm like i would try to bs the answer yeah. right and then i would ramble yeah. I'm like i have no idea what the hell i'm talking about but i'm gonna say, say something like no you don't need to you don't need to say everything if you don't know be like oh let me find that out for you yeah. right there's no worries and then secondly is like um every single day to to learn 
yeah. to be obsessively growing on your skill level, right? Like leaders are readers, like reading, learning, practicing, role playing. Like I would not be where I am today if I didn't role play. I hated role playing. I used to role play with these big dudes that were way bigger than me and it was so awkward. I would like freeze up and stutter, but that made me better, yes. right? And so it's like getting uncomfortable and practicing and role playing with your team is better than practicing a prospects. Oh, 100%. Right? Don't so practice if you're not doing on money. it. Don't practice don't on money. Don't practice on money. I like yeah. that. Can I use that? Yeah. Don't practice on money. Yeah, That's don't practice so on good. money. That's your money. And like one thing that we always say in door to doors, the doors always, the doors will always provide. Mm. You need a bathroom, the doors will provide. You need a drink, the doors will provide. You need yeah. money, the doors will provide. If you need someone to listen to you, the doors will provide. I love that. If you need to help somebody else, the doors, the doors will, provide. will provide. And like so I, I feel like so many people don't have that mindset. And there's the hardest part of a lot of these people's job is tr truly their mindset. That's yeah. why there's so many mindset coaches here. Yeah. Is because 95% of our job is just mindset. Yeah. Keeping the right mindset. And I'm I take total accountability that sometimes my mindset's not in the right place either. Yeah. But like I, I've taken and I almost want to send you on this too, but it's a it's a human design course. Okay. And you learn your human design and like what's good. Are you somebody that needs space? Yeah. What's the best food for you to digest? And like I yeah. learned a lot. Of, I took a human design course with this girl Tessa. I think I'm a manifesting generator. Okay. I'm a manifesting. Uh, I'm a manifester as well. Okay. Much. Amazing. So yeah, yeah. yeah I'm getting you. So like it's it's cool stuff, but like I think learning about yourself too is yeah. gonna help with your mindset. Of course, because like what works for you know maybe London might not work for me. Yeah. Um, but that's the biggest thing is just work on your mindset. You that's know, amazing. Yeah, so. incredible. All right, tell everyone where they can find you. Yeah, Instagram's the best place, guys. Melissa Ramiza, M E L I S S A R O M I Z A. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. You guys can find me, but I'm most active on Instagram. Amazing. Check her out, followers. Really, really great stuff. We will see you on the next episode. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course.